The Sun Realm is directly referenced in Elden Ring. The Shadow World is alluded to. So is this what they mean by the Lands Between? The Lands Between what and what exactly? The trailer and the interviews accompanying the trailer presented a lot more questions than answers. I am Moxie, and this is Heavy Speculation. According to the Famitsu article, Miyazaki states, There are several reasons that I have employed fragmented storytelling, including in Elden Ring. First, I want the gameplay experience to become the player's story. For that, we don't tell the rigid story in a verbose way. Additionally, we want to leave some of the story to the player's imagination. This ties in to making the gameplay experience the player's story as mentioned earlier, and becoming absorbed in filling in the margins with your own imagination is simply fun, I believe. There is also the enjoyment of collecting the fragments in order to understand. Like, ah, so that's what that means. It all connects. In other words, Miyazaki wants us to speculate. And boy, do I want to see how the Land of Shadow gives additional context and understanding to this beautifully vague story. So let us dissect what the Land of Shadow means. The Land of Shadow, a place obscured by the Erd Tree, where the goddess Marika first set foot. A land purged in an unsung battle, set ablaze by Mesmer's flame. It was to this land that Mikola departed, divesting himself of his flesh, his strength, his lineage, of all things golden. The giant tree looks like the Erd tree being suffocated by Deathroot. There is this theory I really like by a TikToker, not Precursor. This is actually, in fact, the health. This idea was also mentioned later in Vati Vidya's trailer analysis. The health. The health and steeple states Great sword patterned after the black steeple of the health, the lampwood which guides the dead of the living world. The lamplight is similar to grace in appearance, only it is said that it can only be seen by those who have met their death in battle. According to the root resin item description, the roots of the great tree were once linked to those of the Ur tree or so they say, and it is for this reason the catacombs are built around the great tree roots. Death Root On the night of the dire plot, the stolen rune of death enabled the first death of a demigod. Later, the rune of death spread across the lands between, through the underground roots of the great tree, sprouting in the form of Death Root. Map of Deep Root Depths At the very depths of the earth tree's majestic roots lies the source of Ansel and the Sofa rivers. Here, too, begins the network of the Great Tree's roots that spread throughout the lands between. I see this map as saying the Erd Tree's roots begin here, and so do the Great Trees. So you know how all the trees are depicted with roots? Yeah. Okay, so, well, if this is because it is reflective of the health of both parts of the tree, like, this is the Shadow Tree, and this is the Erd Tree, the Great Tree is both the Ur Tree and the Shadow Tree when they are once physically connected. While if Mikla's Halig Tree is somewhat a model for what the Great Tree used to be, there's the Golden Tree and the Shadow Tree, but they were once one thing. Some think it is only referring to the Ur Tree, but that was before there was two trees? According to the Famitsu article, Miyazaki states, Due to something story-related, the worlds became physically separated. Erd tree refers to the golden tree that appears in the main title. So, directly interpreting this, the DLC title means the shadow of this golden tree. In the concept art that was shown in February of 2023, it is this shadow of the Erd tree that looms tall in the left background. And we also call this the shadow tree. So the DLC takes place not in the lands between, but the shadow lands of which the shadow tree is a symbol. Also, there is another small hidden meaning in the title. We hope you will figure this out when playing the game. So here are our first major pieces of context. One, this tree is called the Shadow Tree. Two, the Land of Shadow and the Lands Between were once physically connected. Three, a plot point in the story physically separates the Land of Shadow and the Lands Between. 
I think that something has to do with Fermazula and the Elden Ring in Malchus' boss chamber. See, I always thought it was strange how Deathroot popped up in the most random places. Sure, it's spreading through the Great Roots, but like, how? It doesn't really make sense. It would make sense if the Great Tree is the only thing to connect the worlds together. A few details to note here. Miyazaki talks about the small meaning in the title. The main thing I have noticed upon the trailer and the title releasing is that it looks like the roots are feeding into each other on the O. There's also the medallion for the Lift of Rold, which depicts roots reaching far below the Divine Towers. The words Shadow of the Earth Tree are more shattered than the words Elden Ring, according to an interview Miyazaki did with Edge, Boss Encounter. The rings that you're looking at in the logo are not so much a representation of those factions, as you put it, but more a representation of the law of the world, the rules, and the order. Queen America is a vessel of the Elden Ring, carrier of its vision. A god in truth. But after the Elden Ring's shattering, she was imprisoned in the Erd Tree. Maybe, since the Elden Ring is reflective of the fundamental laws of the world, then the Elden Ring depicted in Fair Missoula was broken off from the main Elden Ring, and this is also what separated the Golden Tree from the Shadow Tree. Maybe the now Shadow Tree is actually the real Earth Tree. As Maxi mentioned, shattering the Elden Ring also shattered the Earth Tree. It could be that this is the reason we see the Earth Tree part in the Shadow Tree tilted as if it's about to fall over. It is also possible that the, let's call it Halic Tree part, is holding up the Earth Tree here instead of strangling it. This would mean that the Earth Tree we see in the Lands Between is indeed, as theorized by so many, an illusion. But that's just the theory. Going back to the Fimitsu article. Also, one other main pillar of the DLC story is the history of this shadow land and the history of Queen Marika. Fimitsu. So, there have been many details just revealed. Please, let me ask more. You just mentioned Queen Marika's history. Does this mean that the DLC takes place in the past? No, it takes place in the same time as the main title. The setting is not in the distant past or future. The Shadowlands and Queen Marika's past will be told in the same manner as the Shattering was in the main title. That is in fact Mikola, and it is he who traveled to the Land of Shadow and it's the players who will be tracing his path and following in his footsteps, trying to see what he's going to do there. Another axis of the story is Queen Marika and what she did in the Land of Shadow and what led Mikola to follow her there. In fact, the Land of Shadows is the place where Marika became a god and the Golden Tree was born. Okay, so Miyazaki gives us more important context here. 4. This takes place in a parallel time with the Lands Between. Not the future, not the past. 5. Echoes of Queen Marika will reveal more of Marika's past, most likely. 6. Marika ascended to godhood in the Land of Shadow. 7. The Golden Tree, the Erd Tree was born in the Land of Shadow. Here's what we know about the birth of the Ur Tree. According to the Sword Monument in the Mountaintops of the Giants, the war against the Giants, champions battle, trolls betray, fire vanquished, the era of the Ur Tree begins. Smithing Stone 8, thought to have been used to hone the weapons of the champions of the war against the Giants at the birth of the Ur Tree. Why does going to the mountaintops and wrecking the giants begin the era of the Ur Tree? The Remembrance of the Fire Giant states, The Fire Giant is a survivor of the war against the giants. Upon realizing that the flames of the forge would never die, Queen Marika marked him with a curse. O oh, trifling giant, mayst thou tend thy flame for eternity. In Marika's own words, put the giants to the sword and confine the flame atop the mount. Let a new epoch begin, an epoch glistening with life. Brandish the Elden Ring for the age of the Erd Tree. When the Erd Tree flourished, even the demigods could not stave off its effects, despite their nigh godhood. And finally, Bandit pointed out that the Elden Ring is the source of the Erd Tree. 
which somehow I missed. So, naturally, perhaps, then the Elden Ring being shattered led to the Earth Tree itself becoming also shattered. 8. Queen Merica's actions led Mithla to follow her. The superior incantation of the fire monks, Surge O Flame, states, The giant's flame is the flame of ruin, capable of burning the Earth Tree. And so, following the war of the giants, its ruinous blaze was sealed, and the guardians were appointed to watch over it. The blaze was sealed. Hmm. I wonder where they could have put a giant basket of ruinous fire. I mean, I seriously do not know how no one is talking about this. But like, I think that Merica banished the Flame of Ruin to the Shadow Realm. I'm sending you to the Shadow Realm. Perhaps this is how the World of Shadow was created in the first place. Yes, the Shadowlands in which the DLC takes place are sundered from the lands between where the main story takes place. It has been removed from and hidden from the outside world, and this veil is a symbol of that. Sunder, to break apart or in two. Separate by or as if by violence or by intervening time or space. Huh. Split apart. Okay. Nine. The shadow world is split apart from the lands between. Ten. The veil is symbolic of the land of shadows. That is, hidden from the lands between. The Church of Manicellus, or as I lovingly refer to it, Church of Hand is visible in the trailer. When the Tarnish goes to the Moonlight Altar in the game, it's kind of weird. Almost otherworldly. Here is also one of the places that I noticed the moon overlaps with the Erd Tree, where the moon eclipses the Erd Tree and reveals Ronnie's Dark Moon. So, like, maybe there's certain areas of overlap between the Lands Between and the Shadow World. Maybe these areas will provide additional context to what's happening. Let us turn our attention back to the Veil. America's Mischief is an item that I've puzzled over for a long time. I always thought this was used to trick Rinala into falling in love, as Rinala was one of America's last adversaries. Though, I think that Vati is the one that brought this disjointed idea to life. The Veil effect looks eerily similar to the sky and the Veil here. When Godric was hounded from Lindell, the royal capital, this was one of the multitude of treasures he took with him also known as America's Mischief. The narrator in this item description seems to be alluding to what's going on here. Maybe this item was merely a joke or a poke at what America did in the Land of Shadow. This is America's Mischief. Another thing to solidify this idea is America's bedchamber, which everyone and their mother and their neighbor and God has pointed out. Bandit pointed out that it reminds him of the Concealing Veil, which makes sense given America's connection with the Newman. Newman's Ruin. The Newman are said to have come from outside the Lands Between, and are in fact of the same stock as Queen America herself. The Black Knives were Newman. The Newman are said to be descendants of Akai, which means Spirit World, Underworld, or Next World. So the Newman could be descendants of the people from the Shadow World. Another incantation this veil reminded me of was Darkness. Incantation of the Two Fingers Servants, who once served as assassins of the Round Table Hold. The assassins themselves were once tarnished, who had strayed from the guidance, and they pursued their duty in the darkness that is without grace. Divesting himself of his flesh, his strength, his lineage, of, of all, all things, things golden. golden. So... These things are likely connected. In the trailer, there are two different shots of the shadow tree. In the first one, it is more sickly and blackened, covered in that veil. Now, a shadow world obviously has something to do with the eclipse, right? There are three items associated with the eclipse. The eclipse shuttle, storied sword and treasure of Castle Soul that depicts an eclipse sun drained of color. Eclipse crest heater shield. The sun in Eclipse is said to be the symbol of a wandering mausoleum, where the soul is demigod slumber. Eclipse Crest Great Shield The Eclipse sun drained of color is the protective star of the soul is demigod. It aids the mausoleum knights by keeping destined death at bay. There are clear ties between the Eclipse and the soul is demigods. So I wonder if it won't just be Mesmer, but more demigods. If you're interested in a deeper dive on Mesmer, 
I highly recommend checking out Smotown's lore breakdown. I'm not going to elaborate on that smur here because that would lead to an utter derailment of speculation. Anywho, back to the Eclipse. There are two different stranded souls who talk about the Eclipse. Oh, great sun, frigid son of soul, surrender yourself to the Eclipse, grant life to the soulless bones. The sun has not been swallowed, our prayers were lacking. Your comrade remains soulless. I will never set my eyes upon it now, your divine halo tree. So, something needs to swallow the sun. Does the sun being swallowed mean the sun is an eclipse? In other words, it looks like Migla did some kind of magic something, which has an effect on the tree. Being some kind of alchemical stuff that Quelag, Xyostorm, and many others have crackpot alchemical theories on by now, I'm sure of it, and I'm here for it. The sun is usually swallowed by a moon in an eclipse. An eclipse cannot happen if the stars are not in motion. The stars alter the fate of the Karian royal family and the fate of your mistress, Rani. But long ago, General Radan challenged the swirling constellations and in a crushing victory, arrested their cycles. Star Scourge Heirloom, the mightiest hero of the demigods confronted the falling stars alone. And thus did he crush them, his conquest sealing the fate of the stars. Now he is the force that repulses the stars. If General Radan were to die, the stars would resume their movement. Radan has to be dead for the Tarnished to enter the World of Shadow. So, the fate of the stars is important to both the Land of Shadows itself and Mikla's journey is dependent on it as well. Which, on a side note, is this Radan? Like, you know... Like, like you know how Moog and Morgoth have like two forms. Like, is it, is this what's happening here? Like, it's it, that's for Dawn, right? I don't know. The eclipse is incredibly significant to Mikla's character arc. His motivations are twofold: bring Godwin a true death and cure Melania's Scarlet Rod. Somehow, the eclipse would bring about some change within Mikla, and that would allow him to reach his goals and perhaps even godhood. There is a sign that appears as an in-game message in the Sainted Hero's Grave. Shadow bathes in light and knows weakness. An eclipse is essentially standing in the shadow and looking up at a light source. Is this the way in which Mikla will bring about an eclipse? So, a shadow is typically cast from a light source being blocked by a physical object, right? However, what's confusing is that there isn't really a sun present, per se, just the Erd tree. There is a little sun on the sundial in the corner of the map, which everybody on Twitter is going crazy over right now, and the Sun Realm Shield. Shield of honor depicting a city crowned by the sun. It has seen better days. Much like the wear upon the shield, the seat of the sun is long faded away. This can be farmed from the skeletons near their hermit merchant shack in Altus Plateau. Some have speculated that this could be a reference to an Orlando as an Easter egg. An Easter egg? Okay, so if you know one thing about me, you know that anything in the game is up for grabs to speculate about, right? I have heard it proposed a few times that this universe is tied to Dark Souls and Bloodborne in more ways than one. I'm on the first Dark Souls right now, and I'm still just learning the lore. So, alright, hear me out. Soul of Light, claimed by Gwyn, is the Lord of Sunlight. The item description for the Crown of the Dark Sun states, Crown of the Dark Sun Gwendolyn, protector of the Forsaken City of An Orlando. This crown of the gods demands faith immeasurable of its wearer, but it is imbued with the dark moon power that enhances all magic. The image of the sun manifests Gwendolyn's deep adoration of the sun. Kyle, I can hear your keyboard. Just hold on and let me cook. Gwyn had some kids, right? And the first one, the mysterious one, the one removed from history that y'all puzzle over, that kid. According to the soul of the Nameless King, the Nameless King was once the dragon slaying god of war, before he sacrificed everything to ally himself with the ancient dragons. J 
Can you just wait a second? According to the ring of the firstborn, Lorik Wynn's firstborn, who inherited the sunlight, once wore this ancient ring, boosts the strength of miracles. Lord Gwyn's firstborn was God of War, but his foolishness led to the loss of the annals and rescinding of his definic status. Today, even his name is not known. The firstborn kid of Gwyn, the unnamed one, inherited the sunlight and allied with the ancient dragons. That is so funny and quirky. There's this guy named Godwin that just so happened to also fight and then ally with the dragons. Shut up. And a lady is depicted standing next to a tall guy in a crown in Fair Missoula. Which like also, look in the middle of this crown. Look, what is that? That kind of looks like the eye of the fire giant, right? And the symbol that we have seen repeated over and over and over again. Eight circles around what looks like a star. All right, I get, all right, all right, all right, all right, I get it, all right, I get it. Dark Souls and Elden Ring don't connect. All right, no fun allowed. I got it. <sighs> fine, 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 fine. All right. Then I got an in-universe explanation since you can't handle a crackpot theory. It could also be this place here and this shot of this land. Maybe America hid the seat of the sun here uh, in the land of shadow. That's boring. Let's go a little more speculative. This place definitely fits the description of the seat of the sun. I really love the way that this redditor put it. You slash the blood makes this human posted two years ago. My speculation is that the seat of the sun may actually be Pharaoh Missoula. It is dropped by skeleton warriors in the crumbling city in the sky and skeletons located next to ruins of fair Missoula found across the land and those who live in death and the corruption of dust and death is also present there too. Furthermore, fair Missoula literally floats in the sky closest to the sun and is perpetually in daylight even if it is nighttime mechanically speaking. It is also an ancient civilization and city that has long faded away, slowly crumbling since time immemorial. I think it fits surprisingly well as the Sun Realm of Antiquity, though obviously Castle, Soul, and its prior kingdom may have an in-world connection to the shield too. I don't think this Redditor is too far off base either, because like, if we assume that this is the Seat of the Sun, then maybe it got disconnected from Land of Shadow. Everyone's always assumed that's either come from Caelid around the Bestial Sanctum or the capital, including myself. However, my best friend and homie Benoon, who uh, recently became Elden Lord, noticed that this part of the building looks almost exactly the same as Fermazula. It's always in sunlight after all. There's a bridge to nowhere. It's blackened and broken off, cast into darkness, opposite of what Fermazula is. Deathroot also seems to be present at this structure, which is also crumbling. It also has similar towers and architecture, down to these pillars on the bottom matching up to the pillars on the top in the shot in the trailer. The overall structure and the shape match. It would make more sense that Faramazula being from the Land of Shadow somehow puts it in a perpetual storm beyond time. Like some kind of rift in this space-time continuum. I speculate that the Elden Ring in Malka's boss chamber was once combined with the Elden Ring that was inside of Merica. She shattered the Elden Ring, which shattered these two worlds. Faramazula was never meant to be part of this world. When lands between were physically separated, Faramazula was split from this place right here. Merica was probably the one to physically separate these lands. But then the question becomes, why would she do this? Was it for survival of her race? Was it for a vicious form of tyrannical power? Or was she hiding this land from something else? Okay, so let's take a moment to focus on the overall structure of this world. Since the launch of the trailer, I've done a ton of mock-ups of how this world is structured. First things first, the Land of Shadow is likely in the space between all the Divine Towers. Right where that mysterious little cloud is. As many of you know, the Divine Towers make a hexagon, so it is speculated by many that this is more than likely where that huge hunk of land, a little bit bigger than Limgrave, would be located. There's this one, which is an interesting way of visualizing the world. 
and this is how I thought of the Land of Shadow initially, until I saw a map reconstruction. There is user Ziodax, who constructed a diagram by carefully analyzing the structures and land masses in the background. I find this to be incredibly accurate and helpful for establishing our bearings, as you can see by this little bump in the land. The Land of Shadow is most likely not mirrored. Then while gathering footage, I noticed the beams coming from the earth tree in a different light. I think these beams are part of the veil concealing the Land of Shadow. Imagine the lands between stacked directly on top of the Land of Shadow. This seems to be accurate, and it would line up with my speculation about Vermazula. And I think the veil is what would have severed Vermazula from this structure. TLGTW and I were having a private discussion in Discord when the trailer came out. And she mentioned a thought about the lands between being memories for the Erd Tree, which has lived in my head rent free since she suggested it. What happened going back and forth over and over is that O in the title. If the Shadow Tree is truly stacked on top of the Erd Tree, then how would it connect? It could be Fair Missoula, but it just doesn't seem to fit with geography. Then it dawned on me while looking at this post by Zaya Storm about the Round Table Hold. It clicked. If you look at the icon, for the sight of Grace at the Round Table, it's so obvious. The Round Table hold could be the top of the veil connecting the two worlds. This seems to fit way too perfectly, so I began researching and found a post by Nameless Singer on Reddit about Yggdrasil, which is the official name of the world tree in Norse mythology. Shout out to Ratatasker and the Yggdrasil podcast. Smo and Ratatasker talk about some really interesting stuff in the most recent one. Back to Yggdrasil. It's seriously incredible how Nameless Singer pinpointed this concept and what it could mean for the story two years ago. I'll give you their TLDR. Both the Norse world tree and the Erd tree are trees of memory, into which the lives, fates, and remembrances of the individuals are hewn. Our dropped runes look like tiny Erd tree sprouts because they are made of the same substance, this golden light. There are a set of concepts that are roughly equivalent. Souls equal runes, equal remembrances, equal memories, equal gold, equal grace, equal life, equal substance the earth tree is made of. We encounter two versions of the round table hold. The one in Lindell is the present day version. The one Melina takes us to is a memory of the past. I highly recommend reading their whole post because there's a whole lot of interesting crackpot details I left out. And there's one thing I know in my time of learning Zelda lore as well. A kami in human form cannot contain a massive amount of supernatural power. So, perhaps it was never America in control. Elden Stars. It is said that long ago, the Greater Will sent a golden star bearing a beast into the lands between, which would later become the Elden Ring. The Elden Beast became the Elden Ring. Only Empyreans are able to house the Elden Ring as its vessel. Now, consider this. If a Tarnish chooses one of the mending endings, the choice of how the Tarnish mends the rune is reflected by the Erd Tree. So the Elden Beast is the Elden Ring, and I think that the Elden Ring is also the Erd Tree. There is likely a connection between the Bell of Calling and the Shadow World. Bell of Calling. A bell capable of summoning various spirits from ashen remains. And this is exactly what the Elden Beast is able to do. This goes a step further. Remember how Miyazaki mentioned that there was a secret in the title? If you merely look at the full figure of the Elden Beast, it is almost instantly apparent how much of a striking resemblance it has to both the Erd Tree and the Shadow Tree. One side of the Elden Beast is shrouded in darkness, while the tail looks like a miniature of the Erd Tree. What if the Erd Tree and the Shadow Tree are two parts of the same whole? That whole is the Elden Beast. The sun has not been swallowed. Notice how there's a gash across the midsection of the Elden Beast? The curse mark. The curse mark Godwin and Ronnie share was a hint. This injury likely came from the Rune of Death, being stolen from the Elden Ring. I think that the Rune of Death is a curse mark for the Elden Beast. And I think the Mending Rune tells a miniature story of the Elden Beast's full story. 
This could mean that the Shadow Tree is a reflection of the Erd Tree, bearing the curse that gave the Elden Beast power. Marika would have never been in control once she became a vessel for the Elden Ring. Queen Marika was driven to the brink. Radagon and Marika's sore seals. A solemn duty weighs upon the one beholden. Not unlike the gnawing curse from which there is no deliverance. This becomes apparent when fighting the Elven Beast. This thing flies up and casts a veil of light with a ring, the same as Merica's bedchamber, the same as the Mimic Veil, the same as the Land of Shadow. Meaning, it could be the Elden Beast controlling Merica as a puppet. The Elden Beast casts multiple rings that have similar veils. Are these meant to be other worlds? The Land of Shadows where the upcoming DLC is set is not just a separate realm, but a critical piece of the world's history and the cycle of the Erd Tree and the Elden Ring. The speculation around the Flame of Ruin, America's manipulation of the shadows, and the significance of the Eclipse in Mikla's ambitions all point toward a complex interplay between the divine and the natural and the cosmic forces at work in the game's universe. In conclusion, the idea that the Land of Shadow might house the Flame of Ruin, thereby playing a pivotal role in both past calamities and the potential restoration or further destruction of the Erd Tree, adds a layer of depth and history to the Lands Between. As we look forward to exploring the Land of Shadows in the DLC, let us ponder the complexities of this world that Miyazaki and his team have created, where every shadow hides a story and every light casts a shadow. So, what did you think? What is the Sea of the Sun? How does it cast a shadow? What separates the lands between from the Shadow Realm? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And thank you so much to my channel members. If you'd like to support the channel, consider becoming a channel member or becoming a patron on Patreon. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.